The man disappeared 15 years ago. One evening, the phone rang and the wife learned the terrible truth. Have you ever thought about how unpredictable our lives are? Even though we all think that we always have everything under control, none of us can know what will happen tomorrow. Even if today you are a perfect family man with a good job and a loving wife, tomorrow everything can change in a moment. Today, I will tell you the story of a man who lost his life for a long 15 years in one tragic day. And it was only through a miracle and coincidence that this story was put to rest. Jim McDonald was from suburban New York, where he was born in an ordinary middle-class family in 1921. He ziggling and a good student. But after finishing school, the boy decided to go to work immediately, becoming a postman, delivering mail. As fate would have it, Jim met Anne, and soon, in 1955, the man took this nice and beautiful girl as his wife. Anticipating the fact that Jim and Anne loved each other very much, they had a lot of plans for the future. Unfortunately, life often has some not-so-pleasant surprises. The couple's family idol was overshadowed by the fact that they couldn't have children. But the McDonald family were religious people. They accepted their fate and decided that they needed to invest all of their love in each other. From then on it was like any other story, their life went on as usual. Loving Anne welcomed her husband home from work with a delicious dinner, and Jim surprised her with gifts. In general, the neighbors took the McDonald family as an example for not only were they able to live their lives in love and understanding, but they never quarreled. Everything was just perfect. Now back to the story. But just one winter evening completely changed the couple's life. On a very ordinary February morning in 1971, Jim, who was in his 50s at the time, was taking out the trash. Coincidentally, he slipped on the porch at his house and bruised his head on the fall. Despite the pain, Jim decided not to go to the doctor and waited until it had passed on its own. As usual, it was probably the biggest mistake of his life. A couple of days after the fall, Jim went to visit a friend who lived 10 kilometers away from their home. At one moment his eyes went black, after which he lost control of his car and crashed into a pole. As you may have guessed at this point, the man hit his head hard again. But the repeated injury was not the reason for him to go to the hospital. Even this time, several head injuries in such a short period did the trick. Jim became dizzy often and even fainted a couple of times. But no matter how much, Anne urged her husband to go to the hospital. He was adamant that it would go away on its own. If he had known then what his irresponsibility would entail, he probably would have acted differently. On March 29, 1971, Jim went to visit a comrade for a game of poker. The man decided to head home, but when he wanted to start his car, it turned out to have a dead battery. A friend offered to drive him home, but Jim declined, saying he had a bit of a headache and would walk. This wasn't strange as it was only a 15 minutes walk home. After saying goodbye to his friend, our hero hit the road. No one had seen him since that ill-fated evening. But what had happened to the man that day? And why had he never come to his beloved aunt? I looked at my watch and couldn't understand why Jim wasn't coming back. When it hit midnight, I decided to call the friend my husband was headed to. And when he told me that Jim had gone home more than four hours ago, I became very worried and later told police officers. She immediately contacted the sheriff. The town where the couple lived was small and everyone knew each other well. The policeman searching for Jim was well aware that the man couldn't have gone AWOL, which meant something had happened to him. Volunteers, police officers, and the man's friends began searching the area. Calling hospitals and morgues posters with a picture of the missing man were put up around the city. A huge amount of work had been carried out, but unfortunately, it did not yield any results. As the days dragged on and on, a month had passed since Jim's disappearance and kept her hands up trying to find out what had happened to her husband. A year and then ten. No one. But Anne hoped that Jim would never come back because so many people disappeared every day under mysterious circumstances, taking their secrets with them forever. Anne was the only one who never forgot Jim. She loved him so much that she believed to the last minute that he would come back. 
The woman did not start a new relationship, and Jim's things were still in their place in the house, even though the police and relatives urged Anne to accept it. She could not. Of course, the woman had aged and changed in so many years, and life was no longer pleasurable for her. There were also evil tongues spreading gossip. Some said that the man had left everything and run off with his mistress. Some were convinced that he was hiding from someone, but most just agreed that he was dead. One could agree with that, but in 1009, the unbelievable happened on Christmas Day, 1986. Someone knocked on the door of the McDonald family home, and when the elderly woman leisurely opened the door, she nearly fainted. Indeed, in spite of the fact that 15 years had passed, she recognized the man who stood on the doorstep. Yet, it was her beloved Jim. The first thing I remembered when I came to was unfamiliar houses and streets. My head ached mercilessly, and I didn't feel well. I tried to get up. I even managed to walk a few meters, but then I lost consciousness again. The man later remembered he was unconscious in an alleyway for a few hours, and when he woke up he felt fine, but there was one problem. He had absolutely no memory of who he was or where he was going. He looked up at a billboard and saw a local estate agent, James Peterson. Since Jim couldn't even remember his own name, he decided that he would call himself by his name. The man couldn't remember anything of his past life, and there was nothing left for him to do but wander the streets and ramble along. I didn't go to the police or the hospital because I was afraid I might have done something very bad in my past life. Jim later recounted the next few months of the man's life were quite difficult, but the world is not without good people. A church worker took in a tramp and gave him a job, a place to live, and even helped them get a new national insurance number. The years went by. Jim was doing fine as a cook at a local Philadelphia diner, but everything changed when a customer noticed that the man had a New York native accent. When he told him this, Jim began to show some memories in his head, but the poor man couldn't piece them together. He could see the streets and people's faces, but he had no idea who it was or where the place was. This was the case until 1985. One evening, Jim saw a story on TV about postmen delivering mail in all seasons and in all weathers. As he watched the show, he had the feeling he knew everything about the profession, but he couldn't understand the most important thing how throughout 1986, Jim had scraps of various memories floating around in his head.